Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 7, Chapter 10. Prahlad, the best among exalted devotees. Text 15 through 17, hopefully. Is that right? 15, okay. So 15 is written on the board? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Sri Prahlad Ubacha. Sri Prahlad Ubacha. Vadam. Vadaye etat te varadaishat maha ishwara yat anindat pita me twam avidvan tejaha Aishwaram. Now there's more to this than there's more word for word. There's three verses and three word for words. So what do you usually do in a situation like this here? We say the verses and then we have to repeat the word for words, the whole thing. Okay. Shri Paradu Ubacha. Vadham bada ye ye tat ye Vadham bada ye ye tat ye Bada de shan maheshwara Yad anindat pitame Twam ad bidbangs teja aishwadam Shri Paradu Ubacha Vadam Badaya Etate Vadadishan Maheshwara Yad Anindat Pitame There's a syllable missing. Anyway, Twam Abid Bangtija Aishwadam. Okay, the first word in the last line belongs in the word in the line before it. So please listen carefully. Shri Prada Uvacha Vadang Vadaye Etate Vadadeshan Maheshwara Yet Anindat Pita Twam Abidvangs teja aishwaram Shri Prada Ubacha Vanang Vadaya etat ye te Vadadishan Maheshwara Yadanindat pita me twam Abidvang teja aishwaram We'll send that one into the BBT. That's got to be moved. Hare Krishna. So I'll just chant the next two verses by myself, okay? Vidhama shakshat sarvaloka gurum prabhum brartri heti mrisha dristis twad bhakti maichagaban tasmat pita me pujita Duranta dustaradagat Putas te pangasang dristas Tada kripanavatsala hmm. Kripanavatsala hmm. Sri Parada Uvacha Prahlad Maharaj said Varam Benediction 
Vadaye, I pray, Etat, this, Te, from you, Varada Ishad, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who offers benedictions. Even to such exalted souls, such exalted souls as, Brahma and Shiva. as Brahma and Shiva, Maha Ishvara, Maha Ishvara. O, my Lord, o my Supreme Lord, yet, yet that, that. Anindat, Anindat vilified, vilified. Pita, Pita Father, Father. May, may my, my. Twam, Twam you. A vidvan, without knowledge of, tejaha, strength, aishwaram, supremacy, vidha, being polluted, amarsha, with anger, ashayaha, within the heart, sakshat, directly. Sarvaloka Gurum, unto the Supreme Spiritual Master of all living beings, Prabhum, unto the Supreme Master, Brartiha, the killer of his brother, Iti, thus, Mishadrishti, falsely envious. Because of, a false conception. because of a false conception. Let's repeat that again. Falsely envious because of a false conception. Twat bhakte unto your devotee. Mayi unto me. Cha and agraban who committed heavily sinful activities. Tasmat, from that, Pita, Father, Me, My, Puyeta, may be purified. Durantat, very great. Dustarat, difficult to pass over. A God from all sinful activities. Puttaha, although he was purified. Te, of you. Apanga, by the glance over him. Sandrishtaha, being looked at. Tada, at that time. Kripanavatsala. O you who are merciful to the materialistic. This is extremely important verses. Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Prahlad Maharaj said, O Supreme Lord, because you are so merciful to the fallen souls, I ask for you only one benediction. I know that my father, at the time of his death, had already been purified by your glance upon him. But because of his ignorance of your beautiful power and supremacy, <clears throat> he was unnecessarily anger, angry at you, falsely thinking that you were the killer of his brother. Thus, he directly blasphemed your lordship, the spiritual master of all living beings and committed heavily sinful activities directed against me, your devotee. I wish that he be excused for these sinful activities. Please repeat. Pilad Maharaj said, O Supreme Lord, because you are so merciful to the fallen souls, I ask you for only one benediction, I know that my father, <clears throat> at the time of his death, had already been purified by your glance upon him. 
But because of his ignorance of your beautiful power and supremacy, he was unnecessarily angry at you, falsely thinking that you were the killer of his brother. Thus he directly blasphemed your lordship, the spiritual master of all living beings, and committed heavily sinful activities directed against me, your devotee. I wish that he be ex may be excused for these sinful activities. Purport by his divine grace. <clears throat> Although Hiranyakashipu was purified, as soon as he came in contact with the Lord's lap and the Lord saw him, Prahlad Maharaj still wanted to hear from the Lord's own mouth that his father had been purified by the Lord's causeless mercy. Prahlad Maharaj offered this prayer to the Lord for the sake of his father. As a Vaishnava son, despite all the inconveniences imposed upon him by his father, he could not forget his father's affection. Oma Gyanati Milandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Jina Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Tadati Sapadantikam Mukam Karurivachalam Pangam Longayate Girim Yat Kripa Tamaham Bande Shigurun Dinatabanam <clears throat> Namashreshtumanum Apisati Putram Atrasarupam Rupam Tasya Grajim Urubudim Matudim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivadamaho Radhika Madavasam Prapto yasya patita kripiyo shri gurun tannato smi Bande ham shri guru Shri yuta padakamalam shri gurun vaishnabans cha Shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana raganatan vitam tam sajivam Sadvetam sadvadutam pudijana sahitam Krishna chaitanya devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitangscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vidanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Deve Gaudavani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Panchakalpa Drubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasudhi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Dhamma, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Antaya Madhulabala, Hare Dasya Vayo, Yad Rama Krishna Charanas Parasha Pramodaha, Manam Tanoti Sahago Ganeyostuyo Yad, Pani Yesu Yubasakandana Kandamulahai. Matsamo nasti papatma, naparadi nakaschana, pari hare pilajjame, kimbru ve purushotama. Yubatinam tata yuni, yunam cha yavatau yata, mano bidabate tadbam, mano me ramatam tvai. Bumau skalita padanam, Bhumyadeva balambanam, Tvayijata paradanam, 
Twam me va sharanam pravo. Govinda valabe radhe prartiye tvamaham sada. Tudiyam iti janatu govindo mam tvaya saha. Radhe vrindavanadishe karuna mitavahini. Kripaya tvapadabja dasyam vayam prudiyatam. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> the teachings of Prahlad Maharaj <clears throat> uh, were some of the favorite, if not the favorite, of, of Srila Prabhupada. He referred to them uh, as often as any other part of the Bhagavatam or any other part of the scripture in his preaching because <clears throat> uh, the mentality of, of Prahlad Maharaj is uh, so exemplary and especially for us who were born in this western world at this time in history when uh, the activities of persons who here it's described uh, in the word for word falsely envious mrisha drishti falsely envious because of a false conception uh, in the material world the soul is thinking that uh, he is the body he's forgetful of his spiritual identity and therefore forgetful of his relationship with the Supreme Soul, Krishna. <clears throat> and because of this, uh, he's trying to compete. The conditioned soul, all of us, are, are trying to compete with Krishna, consciously or unconsciously. Uh, Krishna explains to Arjun in the Gita, Ichcha, Dvesha, Samutina, Dvandva, Mohina, Bharata, uh, that all living beings come into this uh, material world overcome by the, the dualities of uh, desire and hate. Uh, raga means uh, desire and dvesha means aversion or can be translated as hatred. Uh, and therefore it goes through life, you know, evaluating due to this false conception, you know, who is friend and who is enemy. And this conception as Prahlad Maharaj has already described in his teachings, this, friend, this conception of friend and enemy is actually a misconception. It's actually a false conception. There are no friends and enemies in reality. Uh, uh, here, uh, Prahlad Maharaj is explaining that his father uh, falsely thought that Lord Vishnu was the killer of his brother. Now, <laughs> Lord Vishnu directly killed his brother with his own hand. So how can he say that Lord Vishnu, he falsely conceived that Lord Vishnu killed his own brother because he did it with his own hand. He's saying this because <clears throat> it is our own uh, misbehavior. It is our own uh, uh, fault uh, that causes the things to happen to us that do. And this is the conception that a devotee uh, lives life by and sees the world through this conception. Uh, and therefore the devotee is no longer envious and the devotee is no longer uh, seeking revenge. You see? Uh, it is natural in the material world to, for a person who is wronged to try to correct the situation. And generally that means revenge of one kind or another. Uh, there's a funny saying someone told me recently, a joke, maybe it was Brahma Tirtha. He said, you know, uh, I'm going to tell this joke. I hope nobody takes offense with this joke. It's, a, it's about a group of people. Anyway, different groups of people have different characteristics, you know, and they write books about it. Like us Americans, we have a tendency to be a little rude and and a little bit uncultured in our dealings sometimes. So overseas, they, 
they sometimes think, look at us kind of brash and kind of a little bit uncouth sometimes. They wrote a book about it, The Ugly American. Somebody wrote that book, I don't remember who. And like that, every, you know, Germans are very, you know, methodical and precise and Japanese the same. You know, that's why they were allies at one point in, in the history of the world. And uh, like that. So the Irish, they have this, you know, strong spirit, this strong, and it comes out in the terms of anger sometimes and uh, grudges. So he, Brahmatirtha told the joke, he said, yes, the characteristic of the Irish, you can tell if they have Alzheimer's because the only thing they can remember is their grudges. You see? So, uh, but this is our position when we're in ignorance. Uh, Krishna explains to, uh, to Arjun, Apichet asi pape bio, sarve bio papa kritama. Sarva jnana plane by Vidrinam Santurishisi. He says, even if you're uh, engaged in the most abominable activities, if you're situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge, you can very easily cross over the ocean of material sufferings. So, this is the essence. This verse is extremely important, these verses, because they explain the essence of spiritual life. You know, uh, in physics they have a theory, you know, vector theory. You know, an object may have so many forces acting upon it, but the direction it heads is called the resultant vector. You know, the direction it heads is a result of all the different forces calculated in terms of angles and whatever, and whatever, and it goes in a certain direction. So this is the you know resultant vector of you know, all the teachings, you know, uh, of the, uh, of our acharyas, the spiritual teachings, that uh, we should uh, come out of this conception uh, uh, that we are the body, uh, that we are, you know, uh, the mind. And not just that, but we should come out of the conception that other persons are their bodies and their minds. This is not an ordinary thing to come to. This is not an ordinary conclusion to come to. And even if we haven't realized it, here Prahlad Maharaj has actually realized it. Therefore, when he's asked by Lord Nishingadev for a benediction, uh, he could have asked for anything. He, he had the full mercy of the Lord. The Lord put his hand on Prahlad's head and by that touch, just as he's saying, you took my father on the lap and by the touch of your transcendental body, he was purified already. See, so he didn't need to ask for this benediction. He already knew. But he wanted to hear it directly from the Lord himself. You know, uh, that his father was, go was going to be forgiven and was going to be all right. This is the height of knowledge. It is the height of Brahminical behavior and, and consciousness. Um, in, in the teachings of uh, Bhishma Dev, in the, in the first canto of the Bhagavatam, unfortunately I don't remember the verse, forgive me for that, but if you go through it carefully, there's one long purport, and in that purport <clears throat> there's a list of anomalies that the conditioned souls have uh, dizziness, you know, and anger is one of them. There's a whole list, I don't remember exactly the list, but, and then there's a mentality or, or a correction, you know, that comes with each one of those uh, uh, misconceptions or, or wrong ideas or wrong behavior. Uh, and for anger, how we overcome anger it says, Prabhupada says, is to learn how to forgive. Until we learn how to actually forgive, then we will not be able to give up anger completely. This is the most powerful energy. The Brahma Tejas is more powerful than the Chatriya Tejas. The 
Chetya Tejas is powerful due to the strength of the person's arms and his ability to wield weapons and, you know, uh, uh, fight with the enemy and all these things. Heroism, power, these are the, the qualities described by Krishna in, of the Chetya in the, in the Gita. And, but the Brahminical Tejas is based on another energy. It is based on knowledge. It is based on humility. It is based on simplicity. It is based on forgiveness. It is based on tolerance. Now, it may seem, and especially in this, these days and ages, they, they have, they have a, a saying, you know, uh, nice guys finish last. This is like the bedrock, you know, of the American culture. You know, nice guys finish last. And therefore, you're taught from the very beginning to get the other guy and make sure that the other guy is down and you're up, you know, and that the bottom line coming into your pocket is, you know, uh, you know, maximized at the expense of anything and anyone else. So this is the opposite, exact opposite of uh, a spiritually enlightened person. This is deep ignorance. And Prahlad Maharaj is here acknowledging that his father was uh, the biggest materialist and therefore he went all over the universe you know, defeating people, uh, humiliating people. He didn't care. He, he, he liked to humiliate people. You know, we have a whole culture now, you know, it's kind of like the sitcom culture, you know, where they have their entertainment, you know, is based on, you know, saying a one-liner that will embarrass the other person and then everybody laughs. It, it, this, is, this is what they call comedy. You know, whatever kind of hurts the other person or or, or if they see another person get into an accident or, you know, somebody plays a practical joke and puts a banana peel and they slip and fall. Ha, 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 everybody laughs. Because the whole culture is based on a false premise. And here, Prahlad Maharaj, he is exhibiting the uh, supreme quality of a devotee. And that is Forgiveness. And this philosophy is not uh, armchair philosophy. This is not, these books are not to entertain us or to just to give us relief from, you know, of course they are, they are <laughs> meant to give us relief and they do give us relief when we read them. But, you know, when we stop reading them and we have to conduct ourselves in the world and all of us have to conduct ourselves in the world. Therefore, Krishna says in the Gita, karma jayo ya karmana. All glory is to work. All glory is to work. Because everyone must work in order to maintain the body and the soul together. They have to do some kind of work. You see? And that work should be done in detachment. It should be done out of duty. And it should be done uh, properly according to a theistic conduct. According to the uh, laws of God. And then the atmosphere that's created by such behavior is uh, more conducive. It's peaceful. Nasti buddhir ayuktasya na cha yuktasya bhavana na cha bhavetak shantir ashantasya kutasukam There Krishna says, uh, we can't actually attain happiness without peace. The purpose of our Vanasham conception, the purpose of our organizing, organizing ourselves and our families and our duties and doing our duties properly are meant to create an atmosphere which is, you know, undisturbed, not so that we'll be, you know, feel good, although that's a byproduct, but it's meant to create an atmosphere in which we are uh, uh, not only permitted but empowered and facilitated, you know, to think of Krishna, to remember Krishna, to remember, you know, that, that it's Krishna that is the supreme authority and the owner and controller of everything. Therefore, Krishna says in the, in the Gita, doesn't he? Bhoktaram jagitapasam sarvaloka meheshwaram suridam sarvabhutanam gyatpa mam shantim vichtiti. This is the peace formula, Srila Prabhupada used to call it, the peace formula. Bhoktaram uh, jagitapasam, whatever jagya, whatever tapas, whatever we do in order to purify ourselves, whatever we offer and sacrifice, you know, uh, we should know that Krishna is the bestower of that. He's the, he's the benedictor. You know? 
Sarvaloka Maheshram. He's the owner of everything. He's the controller of everything. Suridam Sarvabudam. He's the friend of everyone. No one else can be the friend of everyone because we can't know everyone. What to speak of be the friend of everyone? But Krishna, he's in our hearts and he's in the hearts of everyone. And this is the clue, this is the secret for being able to forgive others. Because this material world is a place of suffering, it's a place of imperfection. It is called, especially the Kali Yuga, it's an ocean of fault. In, in, in Bhagavatam, it's described to be an ocean of fault. And there's one good quality in this ocean of fault, and that is that the chanting of the holy names of the Lord can give perfection. So, Prahlad Maharaj is so exalted, therefore he's called, you know, the most ex among the exalted soul. He's the most exalted. You know, those who are in, you know, want to go to Golok and promoting, you know, Braj Bhakti as the highest, they may argue about this, you know. No, no, he's not the highest. The, the gopis are the highest, or the coward boys are the highest, or whatever. And they, there may be some conflict. This is due to to misconception, false conception. You know, when we're, when we're in the world, when we're working in the world, whatever our relationship is with Krishna, we must learn to behave according to these principles uh, given in Srimad Bhagavatam, given in the Gita. We must take these teachings with us as we go through the process of devotional service. Not that, you know, when we want to exclusively uh, think of Krishna in our relationship as uh, a particular rasa, that we give up the Gita, or we don't like to hear the Gita, we don't want to hear the Gita, we don't want to hear about the other incarnations of God. No, this is, this is a false conception. We, we, want, we like to hear anything that's in connection with Krishna. And the proof of this is that uh, the gopis, are, which are, who are the topmost devotees of Krishna, they like to hear. They like to hear the teachings of Prahlad and, and Dhruva Maharaj. There's a pastime in which, you know, Krishna and Shimati Radharani were uh, wandering through the forests of Braj, you know, in between the time when the Rasatan started and then started again. Uh, and and the gopis found them, and then they were talking and having their pastimes. And th the gopis ask Krishna to describe to them the teachings, uh, the, the, the pastimes. I think it was Druva. Uh, I'm not sure. It was either Druva or Prahlad. And because he was a young boy, the gopis were crying when they heard, you know, about the the, the qualities of. It was either Druva or Prahlad. I don't remember. So Prahlad Maharaj is so exalted that all devotees, no matter who they are, they love to hear, you know, about Prahlad Maharaj. And to love to hear about great devotees like Prahlad Maharaj means to want to emulate them in our own personal lives. We cannot imitate. We cannot imitate Prahlad Maharaj. We cannot imitate Haridas Thakur. We can't imitate uh, the great uh, uh, empowered, ever liberated souls uh, but we can emulate them by hearing about their activities. We can practice. We can we can cultivate, you know, this mentality. And how do we do that? We do that by <coughs> uh, behaving <laughs> according to the philosophy in our everyday life. Uh, there's no one who doesn't come uh, to doesn't make mistakes in this material world, a except for persons on the level of Srila Prabhupada. And even then people would interpret sometimes his you know, activities as being imperfect or made a mistake or whatever. You know, it's, that's a misconception, but the point I'm making is that, and Prabhupada confirms it, that you know, to err is human in the, human, in, in, in the Kali Yuga. The world is full of faults. You'll always be able to see faults. If you're looking for the fault, you'll always be able to find a fault in everyone. Because each one of us is seeing fault according to our conception, atmavat manyate jagat. We see others through our own eyes and we have a tendency to see if they're acting according to my standard, according to my value system, they're acting properly. And if they're not, then they're not acting properly. This is a tendency through all of us, for all of us. So I was going to uh, 
I wanted to read something to you, actually. When, when uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, uh, just before he left this world, he gave some very uh, pertinent teachings you know, to his followers. And uh, I wanted to read them out because they give details of you know, how we should think uh, in order to achieve this uh, ideal consciousness, this ideal pure uh, Krishna consciousness as preachers. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj was the ideal preacher. Uh, uh, so be patient with me. I'll just read these out and then maybe we can discuss them. Um, these are all statements that were made by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur right towards the end of his life. Intending to instruct his disciples on the mentality that he wanted them to have, the behavior that he wanted them to have. And in them are contained the details of how to have this proper, perfect consciousness of Prahlad Maharaj. One, we are put to test and trial in this world. Only those who attend the kirtan of the Lord, of the devotees, the, the kirtan of the devotees, can succeed. So we should come to the kirtan. <laughs> First thing, uh, Prahlad Maharaj was always having kirtan. Every time his teachers stopped teaching, nonsense. And as Tiffin Hour Prabhupada said, that he would stand up on the on the bench in his classroom and start preaching to his uh, to his classmates, his his little children demons. Uh, and he was chanting, and he got them to chant. He was always chanting. Two, every spot on earth where discourses on God are held is a place of pilgrimage. So this has all kinds of subtle ramifications. When we come to the class to hear, when we come to the kirtan to hear, we should be coming to a place, you know, that is uh, a place of pilgrimage. We should cultivate respect, respect for the for the atmosphere, respect for the deities, respect for the devotees, respect for the speaker, respect for the Bhagavatam, you know, uh, and the mentality that comes out is that this is a place of pilgrimage. This is something holy is happening here. Therefore, we sit up. The speaker sits up, you know, not because we think we're something. No, but the Bhagavatam. We sit up because the Bhagavatam during Prabhupada's last pastimes. Uh, he, 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 he was in, his in the bed and he couldn't get out, the, out of the bed. He was in his disappearance bed. And uh, he asked Hangsaduda or Bardwaj or somebody to chant. Or no, I'm sorry, he asked Prajumna to read. Yeah, he asked Prajumna to read the Chaitanya Charitamrita to him. So he immediately got on the floor down by the bed next to Prabhupada. He said, no, no, you sit up here. He w wanted him to sit on the bed with Prabhupada. And, and Prajumna was, no, Prabhupada, I can't, I can't you know, sit on, on the bed on your level. No, no, that's not for you. The, the, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. <laughs> he said, it must be here. It must be on this level. It should not be down. I cannot sit above the, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. You see? And in this way, even right to the end, he was showing you know, his humility and his deep you know, uh, realization and assimilation of the principles you know, the spiritual principles. Three, possessions of objects not related to Krishna is our main malady. And I mentioned this, I think, uh, two, two lectures ago, how uh, when, when Shingadev was saying, it doesn't matter that you're in this material world, you know, you will overcome these things uh, by my mercy uh, because you will, you will uh, attain to this state of always glorifying me. So, that it's not important that we're in the material world is a sweeping statement, as I said the other day. It doesn't make any difference where you are in the material world. It doesn't make any difference what your position is, whether you're a, a lowly sweeper on the street or whether you're an exalted king. Uh, uh, 
whatever you have it belongs to Krishna and if you see it like that if you see uh, possessions in relationship to Krishna then you are not in a diseased condition and as soon as you think that what you have is, uh, is, does not, belongs to you rather than belongs to Krishna then you're fallen no matter what you, who you are you know a, pr a pauper can be proud of his penny So possessions of objects not related to Krishna is our ma main malady. Not that we don't have objects. There's a picture in, in, in Srila Gurudev's uh, sitting room, you know, of Bhakti Siddhanta, you know, sannyasi, sitting in a car, dressed in a very kind of fine coat <laughs> with the driver and a couple of other devotees around. But that may not seem very opulent to us now in America, but in those days, that was inconceivable. It was inconceivable that a sannyasi would, what to speak of, wear sewn cloth to ride in an automobile. At that time, there were hardly any automobiles. This had to be before 1936 when he left. It must have been in the 1920s, or early 30s at most. So he had everything. He drove a car into Radakund. <laughs> blew everyone's mind completely. And then what did he lecture on? He lectured on either first can, first le, uh, verse of the Bhagavatam and he left it, le, lectured for like a month or something on one verse and he said, I could have met, le, lectured for six months on this verse. And he never got to the you know, pastimes of Krishna in Koloka Vrindavan because he was so determined that the foundation be solid Unless the foundation of this of, of our behavior is solid, we don't have the foundational principles solidly assimilated until our behavior changes. And our behavior first starts to change when our attitude changes. And our attitudes you can detect our attitude changing when something happens to us that is normally the cause of anger or frustration or or whatever, or even jubilation, and we don't go there. We don't respond, you know, in a way that causes us to become swept away and, and, and forget Krishna, forget our devotional service, and forget that the persons we're dealing with are actually parts of Krishna. These are the tests, you know. And this can't be done overnight. It, it takes time for everyone, and, and each person will awaken at a different rate at a different time. And therefore, all of us need to be patient, not only with ourselves, but with others. We can't expect perfection out of others. <clears throat> False expectation brings disappointment. And if we have a false expectation about the way things must be, then we will constantly live in disappointment. And no one can live constantly in disappointment. <laughs> Therefore, those, those who don't actually go forward, those who don't actually progress, and actually what I mean, what I say by progress, I mean assimilate these instructions into our try, practice. This is what sadhana bhakti means. It means to practice being a devotee, even if you're not you know, feeling like it. There's that famous story of Gargamuni in the very beginning. You know, he came first time he came to the temple, everyone was waiting and set 26 Second Avenue for Prabhupada to come into the room. You know, when he entered the room, everybody prayed obeisances, and except Gargamuni, and he was standing up. He looked like a, he told me he looked like a flagpole in the midst of a, a bed of daisies. He said, <laughs> and then Prabhupada looked at him and he said, "Aren't you going to bow down?" And Gargamuni, if you know him, he's so funny, he said, but I don't feel like bowing down. And Prabhupada said, you bow down, and then you'll feel like bowing down. <laughs> of course, there was a lot of social pressure, you know, like everyone else in the room was bowing down, so there were a lot of influences on him, but he bowed down. And then he explained that later on, after that, he felt like bowing down. And then he, you know, like gave him faith in Prabhupada, it increased his faith in Prabhupada. So this is practice. This is devotional service and practice. Even if we don't, haven't assimilated it, 
you know, as soon as we understand it or theoretically accept something, then we have to practice. Then we have to practice acting like that. Now, this is, this one is directly pertinent to the verse that we're discussing today. Number four. Put, uh, number four. Let me not desire anything but the highest good for my worst enemies. Shall I repeat that one again? <clears throat> let me not desire anything. Notice it doesn't say let you not desire anything. This is Bhakti Siddhanta talking to his disciples and he says, let me not desire anything but the highest good for my worst enemies. When we can come to this state of consciousness, we will have achieved this position huh, of Prahlad Maharaj and we will be safe. We will be secure completely in our spiritual lives. Nothing will ever be able to disturb us again. No matter what's happening to us. Look what happened to Prahlad. His own father, a huge demon, tried to kill him in so many ways. And each time he devised a newer way. And each time Prahlad Maharaj simply chanted Hare Krishna and depended on Krishna. And because he was actually completely Krishna conscious, Krishna appeared each time and protected him under conditions that were impossible to be protected in any other way. An elephant. He brought an elephant to step on him. And the Krishna is in the heart, so the elephant wouldn't step on him. <laughs> you know, he threw him down, you know, like a, a, a big hill full of stones. The stones became soft, like pillows. You know, he threw him into a pit of poisonous snakes. The snakes wouldn't bite him. So, we should actually desire uh, uh, welfare, the, for the welfare of everyone. We should, we, should, we should desire the highest good for everyone, even those who may not be able to uh, appreciate, or those even who are sometimes antagonistic against us. We should, we should wish for their good. Six, those favored by God find their paths set by thorns. Look what happened to Prahlad Maharaj. He, he was the purest devotee. He heard from Narada Muni from the womb. He heard everything, the whole Bhagavatam from the womb and therefore he came out fully Krishna conscious. And yet look what happened to him. His own father when he was a tender, at the tender age of five, tried to kill him in so many ways. So not that we should think that because I'm in some kind of difficulty, I'm not favored by the Lord. This is misconception. And as long as we're in that misconception, we'll be disturbed by the misbehavior of others. This is the practical application of devotional philosophy, of bhakti. This is bhakti yoga. Seven, there is no peace or happiness in our worldly life. Circumstances create turmoil and annoyance. So if you're, if you're thinking that there's going to be a utopia while you're in this material world, as Krishna wrote, in, Prabhupada wrote in that famous letter to Trey Rishi on February 4th or 6th, 1972, uh, that... Uh, you, you, we should not even within this Krishna consciousness movement expect utopia. And he said, this is actually impersonalism, lingering, latent impersonalism, because we're looking for something that doesn't have any fault, and it's not possible to find that in the material world, even among devotees, even among this movement. And therefore, and, and if we can't find it, then we either opt for voidism, and we become a Buddhist, <laughs> or just go away and become a materialist again, you know? 
And Prabhupada said, no, this is actually a symptom of impersonalism, that we expect, you know, utopia. Rather, we should understand that this material world is a place of difficulty. There will be annoyances. You can't avoid no one. Even if you're the most elevated person, Prahlad's the most elevated person. He couldn't avoid this annoyance, this disturbance. Therefore, we must learn to live in this world undisturbed by the annoyances. Then we can be happy. Then we can be free. Chant the Maha Mantra loudly and with attachment. This will drive away inertia, worldly evils, and pests. <laughs> it's Bhakti Siddhanta's it's classic. Sometimes when Prabhupada would go to a new place, in the very beginning, he would go to a new place or, or he would re revisit a place where, that he had just started and he would start the kirtan and when he started the kirtan, what came back was it wasn't like strong, it wasn't full-hearted, it wasn't full-throated. And then Prabhupada would chant a little louder and he would chant a little louder and then finally by the end of the kirtan, everyone was chanting full throttle, full throated. You see, it's very important to do that. In India, sometimes you see, you know, many people, they stand with like this during the kirtan. You, you notice that? They, they're trained, it's, it's, it's a tradition. It's just a tradition. They, they ring the bells, the gongs, and they stand, you know, and the, the philosophy behind it is that they don't want to contaminate the holy name. <laughs> they think that they're impure <clears throat> and therefore they shouldn't chant. They're, otherwise they'll, you know, you know, make the holy name impure. They'll contaminate the holy name as if they can contaminate the holy name. It's really, really a puffed up attitude because if you think that you can, you know, contaminate God, then you're thinking you're better than God or more powerful than God actually. That's the reality. <laughs> So we should chant loudly, full-hearted, full-throated, with full enthusiasm, you know. And even if you don't feel like it, Prabhupada said, do it. And then that will bring your enthusiasm up, that will clear out the cobwebs, you know, that get lodged in our hearts when we're, you know, coursing through the world. Uh, be indifferent to bizarre gossips. This is his translation of, uh, what is that term? Uh, oh, I'm having a senior moment. There's a Bengali term that means, Gramyakata, yeah. Gramyakata means village talk. You know, the villagers, they always talk, did you hear what this one did? Did you see what that one did? This one did? They have, they have jokes, right? That sometimes housewives, they're over the fence, you know, neighbors, and they're, did you see what that one did? You see, did you know what that one got? And you know what this happened over here and this and that? See, this, these we should avoid gossip. We should avoid, especially talking about others behind their backs is very bad. We should avoid that. Some, we all of us do it. We all fall into that trap, you know, and sometimes we're well-meaning even. You know, we're trying to help understand how to improve situations, how to correct situations. But we should always remember that if we're not willing to say to the face of a person what we are in the back, then it's not pure. And it won't have that effect. It won't have the proper effect of correcting the situation. Materialists, they'll say something nice to the front. And he has another one here. Uh, says, uh, a psychophant. He calls it a psychophant is neither a guru or a preacher. Psychophant is one who always is flattering to the face is saying something nice and in the back, you know, is criticizing. But a devotee will do just the opposite. They will speak the truth in front of the person even if it's unpalatable and behind the back they will praise that person. They will glorify that person. That helps create a devotional atmosphere when people are glorifying the devotees, when the devotees are not present. So these are, these are the practical applications of the philosophy that we need to incorporate into our daily lives. And if we, as we do that, the more of us who do it, huh, the atmosphere will change and we'll feel enthusiastic. And we'll feel like coming together and chanting and hearing with one another. He said, uh, 
I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna have to skip some because we're getting late. There's a whole bunch of them, but I wanted to get to some of the later ones. I want to read all of them, actually. This is just so wonderful. Unless we are devoted to God, secularism will not leave us. <laughs> In this world of Maya, averse to the Lord, full of trials and tribulations, only patience, humility, and respect for others are our friends for Hari Bhajan. And of course, this is fully exemplified by Prahlad Maharaj, who is giving affection and respect to his father who just tried to kill him. Even after he left, he wants the, he wants he does he doesn't wish him to go to hell. <laughs> he wishes that he become liberated. The Lord, Gorasandar, puts his devotees in various difficulties and associations to test their patience and strength of mind. Success depends on their good fortune. So we have to be very fortunate to be able to apply these instructions, to be able to tolerate all the trials and tribulations that will put, be put in our paths by the material nature. What to speak of the Lord himself trying to reciprocate with us as, as his devotees, to glorify the devotee, to glorify the process of devotional service. This is what Lord Nishingadev is doing with Prahlad. He's glorifying the devotee and he's glorifying the process of devotional service. So what does our good fortune depend on? It depends on pious act, acts. And we've been given this perfect process, the following of which the hearing and the chanting and the praying and the serving and the remembering and the worshipping, you know, and the, and, the, and, the, and the going on a mission, befriending the devotees and Krishna, giving up everything. These things automatically, these are transcendentally pi pious activities, things. So the more we do these things, the more our piety grows, even if we're not in the proper consciousness mentality. And when we come to a level, a degree of fortune, then we can tolerate anything. Then we, be, then we can be successful. Here's a good one. When faults in others misguide you and delude you, have patience, introspect, find faults in yourself, know that others cannot harm you unless you harm yourself. What a valuable lesson. This is particularly pertinent to Prahlad Maharaj in this pastime. Know that others cannot harm you unless you harm yourself. This is the proper conception. Once this conception is actually assimilated within our character, then we will not respond with revenge. We will not respond with uh, uh, vendetta. And anybody who's claiming to be advanced or being promoted to being on this platform, you know, should not be seen to be overwhelmed by revenge or vendetta. We should be careful. Then the final one, and I'll end here. I wish that every selfless, tender-hearted person of my followers will be prepared to shed 200 gallons of blood for the nourishment of the spiritual corpus of every individual in this world. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. It's, it's all there. <laughs> you know. Everything we need to know, everything we need to do, you know, the mentality we need to have, it's all there. So I'm very late. It's almost nine o'clock. Uh, unless there's 
a burning question? Are there any burning questions? Pretty self-explanatory. Yes, there must be a burn, one burning question. Where can we find this list? Where can we find this list? Well, part of it is in that book that was written by uh, Rupa Vilas, the uh, Rea Vishnu. At towards the end, there's a, a section, teachings, towards the end. You can find it there. I can give you also. I can forward it to you. Yeah. Okay, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Sri Prahlad Maharaj ki jai. Gaur Premanandi. Hari Hari Bo. Thank you very much.